I know it's a bit confusing, but just remember that we are simply reading what information the user sent to us, what type of swap is being executed here. So let's do the following. The includes includes 08. Now, the universal router, like I said, there is a command a commands parameter to the execute function. And this commands, like I said, every two bytes indicates, every two letters indicates the command. In this case, 08 means we are swapping for Uniswap V2. If the swap is not for Uniswap V2, we return it. Why are we doing this for Uniswap V2? Well, because Uniswap V2 is much simpler, even though it's not simple, but it's much simpler than Uniswap V3. If you want to front run, if you want to make profit, a profit from swapping from sandwiching Uniswap v3 transactions you need much more a much more complex project in fact that's what I'm working on so once we are sure that this swap includes a swap in Uniswap v2 we get the following swap position in commands now this is a very important aspect okay what is swap position in commands well we need as you can see here there's an array that contains the data for each command. This is the first command, which is wrap ether. This is the second command, which is a Uniswap v3 swap. So we need to tell, right now we're checking the 08 command, which is Uniswap v2 swap. And we need to know where that is located in this array. Where is it the first position? Is it the second position? For that, we do the following. We do decode it. Arguments, comments. We do a substring to index of 08 and we divide that by 2 to to know where it is located in the array of of commands i know it's confusing but it makes sense once you execute it and then we need the position of the inputs for that we do the following code it inputs swap positioning commands what we're doing here is we're accessing we're reading this data we're accessing that once we know the position, once we know the index, we can access the data from the array for the Uniswap v2 swap. And now we need to decode what this swap means. Let me create a variable called that decoded swap. Decoded swap is this. We create a variable, we'll create a function for that. Let's say decode univer universal router swap. And we put the input position. Now, this function, what it does is it reads this information you see here and it gives you what token are you getting for the swap, how much do you want to get, who is swapping, all of the information that we want for from run transaction, transactions. Let's go ahead and create that function. Input. And how does this look like? Let me check my notes. So the first thing is we need an AB coder. New ethers hotels and because now this this just this is how it is it doesn't make much sense but this is how it is so we need to decode the parameters decoded parameters and we do a decoder dot decode an array that says address u in two five six u in two five six and bytes I believe that's all it is okay you need to pass a boolean and the input there so what it does here it's it's reading the hexabytes information and processing and extracting the address, how much is swapping the user and all of that. Go the following, do a breakdown. We'll see how this is used later on. Do the input substring, we do two, much, and we do the following, 164. This is simply breaking down the hexabytes data because it's divided into chunks of 64 hexabytes I know it's confusing but uh, yeah that's how we that's how you read transactions from the universal router it has two path now we need the path which is which token comes in and which token comes out this is the universal router path and has two path this means we only want a direct swap we don't want swaps where it goes from one token to another token and then gives you a last token those are we're not interested in those for simplicity breakdown dot length more equals nine now I'm not sure what this means but I believe it's it's all the yeah the, what this means is that there's a multiple swap 
multiple token swap it's not just a direct swap so we do the following path one zero x by the way i broke i wrote this code but sometimes you write code that you are not very sure about because for because of how complex it is so yeah we're, we're accessing the path basically substring 24 the path two you may want this information so you need to do this breakdown length substring in fact let me do the following let me if it's not nine we do this okay and now we have the path which is the token that comes in the token that you are given and the token that you are getting uh, then well we can hmm, we can get rid of this because we are only going to check tokens that have two paths and then we return an object now we return the recipient this is all the information that is contained in that particular swap parse and decoded parameters 0 16 this is the user that will receive the swap amount in how much you are passing in how many tokens you are given put a comma here min amount out this is a very important variable because this is this tells us how much how many tokens the user wants to get that the user is willing to receive we will use that to our advantage all right now we can continue by going back to our checks initial checks function so this function is complete this will give us all of the swap information from the universal router the information that we want the recipient the mountain the minimum amount out and the path we will use those for sandwiching for front-running transactions once we have that we simply do the following the coded swap if the recipient is to return false that the that the user is swapping a token let's say usdc for getting ether they are swapping a token for ether we don't want those transactions we want transactions where user where the user is swapping ether for a token because at the end of that after we front run after we sandwich that transaction we will receive ether at the end yeah we gotta make sure that the path zero to lowercase this is the first token that is swapped is not with others i mean to lowercase oh yeah we, we gotta make sure that the first token that we are swapping is ether right so if the first token is not ether we simply return false so yeah, these are the checks now we have all the information that we want so we return the following we return the transaction this is all of the checks we do we check all of this so then we return the transaction we return the amount in which is transaction that value the value how much ether is being sent in the transaction you see we're checking that there is enough that there's more than zero which means it's a transaction where a user is swapping tokens then we access the min amount out this is a very important variable this is telling us how much the user is willing to accept after slippage and it's called min amount out from the decoded swap here you see and finally the path we, we don't need the entire path we need the token to capture and the token to capture yeah let me update this has to path equals true what this means is that the token has a multi swap a multi how, how can i say this yeah you're swapping one token for another token and then you you're making three swaps in one so we simply return this variable we need this so if the code swap has a ha, it's not a, a two path swap it's not a direct swap we return false because we don't want to deal with those swaps we want only direct swaps because it creates more complexity when it comes to calculation to calculating the reserves and all of that good stuff so then we access the path one the token that we want to receive the, the victim wants to receive so yeah these are all the checks we let's go ahead and execute this to make sure it is working i recommend you like i'm doing here execute the function execute the program every milestone every few seconds to make sure everything is on point so yeah we have that we will see the checks passed if the checks are passed i mean if the checks are not passed we return false meaning we don't continue working on that transaction otherwise we continue yeah let's go ahead and check this out